pixel object, we should uh, remember about the rest methods. It could be like uh, rest of levels uh, of uh, our messages, like debug, info, warn, errors. Uh, and I really suggest uh, to use uh, first method, uh, console.debug, uh, when you are working with uh, debug sessions. Uh, I mean that uh, sometimes we can have uh, some real logs in our applications, and if really uh, comfortable when we split uh, the, our login message and debug message, and we can uh, remove uh, quickly after debug sessions uh, all our uh, or code that is related to our debug session. Um, and of course, I uh, want to quickly mention about methods like DirXML and Dir uh, that can help us to uh, display our objects in JSON representation or in uh, not uh, DOM tree representations. Uh, okay, uh, of course, a few words about table method. That method is really uh, cool when we, for example, receive some information from um, API and we have there some uh, array of objects and we want to see uh, what uh, properties we have in that object. And it's really, to, uh, it's really nice to have this array like a table that you can see on the screen. Uh, we also can work a little bit with performance in our application, uh, just using uh, times uh, methods. Uh, and we can uh, get information about how, ta how time uh, did we spend for uh, some pieces of JavaScript in our application or some function or a thing like this. Uh, and uh, the last one method that I want to uh, Shown this presentation, not uh, this is not last that present in uh, console object, but last in the presentation. It's uh, of course console trace. It's really a helpful method when we have some complex uh, code with many async functions and generally uh, with many functions, and we want to understand who called uh, our uh, code, who called our function. Um, okay, and. Uh, uh, if we have some simple issues, it's generally enough, of course. Um, but sometimes we uh, we want to know more about uh, our code, about our JavaScript environment, and uh, we would even don't know from what point we should start uh, our debugging when some something uh, goes wrong. So uh, with this uh, problem. Uh, we to resolve this problem, we can use uh, such feature like breakpoints. Uh, breakpoints uh, generally, what it is, it's uh, ability to uh, start to stop our code during its uh, execution at the point where we want, and uh, well, then we can see all information about uh, our code. Uh, all values that are uh, visible for our code line, uh, current call stack trace, and many other information. Uh, at the end of the group of slide, I will show you some uh, small example how the breakpoints work in real uh, world. But uh, before this, let's talk about another uh, few features that also can help us. Uh, first of them, it's snippets. Uh, I can say that snippets, it's something like notes in your browser. It's a place where you can store some uh, reusable, not only reusable, but every uh, pieces of code that you want to store and uh, maybe reuse them in the future. Uh, and the second, uh, the next feature, it's local overrides. Uh, this uh, feature of uh, debug tools that uh, can help us in situation where we have uh, applications that are working uh, that are uh, work not uh, not on our local machine. It could be developer server or maybe even production server, and we want to debug some some issues there. Uh, so we can set up this uh, feature, and uh, then we we will have ability to edit our code just uh, from our console. Uh, and uh, store it uh, on our local machine. And uh, during next uh, refresh of the page, uh, browser will uh, will load 
local version of this file instead of uh, real JavaScript from uh, some external server. Okay, so let's see on the on practice how uh, this whole feature works. And here I've created a simple form that have uh, uh, that has five fields. And uh, let's fill it. Uh, this form has uh, some simple validation, of course. Um, and uh, if we are talking about uh, debugging, of course. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, one one moment. Yeah, I should refresh the page. I guess. No, it worked not as expected. <laughs> Yeah, and of course we have an error here uh, by default. Uh, so let's try to uh, find this issue um, with these breakpoints and the rest of the features. And first of all, we should uh, understand how we can uh, repeat this uh, issue. Uh, I mean that it's not uh, comfortable to fill this form manually each time. So to, uh, to resolve it, we can use snippets. And to do it, we can go to the snippets tab, which is under source section. And uh, to create a new snippet, we should just click on this plus new snippet uh, button. And then here in this uh, section, we can type any JavaScript that we want to store. Be any JavaScript. And then we can save it uh, by click on command S or control S, dependent uh, what system you are. And uh, then we can run our uh, snippet uh, from this context menu. Okay, yeah, it works. And uh, I've prepared uh, this another simple snippet that uh, will fill our form from the scratch. Yeah, and after this, we can click on submit button and uh, yeah, uh, then we, could see this message again. So now we understand how we can uh, repeat this issue. Uh, next, let's go to overrides. Uh, before uh, work with overrides, we should set up, uh, make some uh, preparation. Uh, we should select a folder on our local uh, machine in which Chrome will store his uh, files. So let's do it. Uh, yeah, we can choose any folder on our machine and uh, then uh, press allow button to give uh, Chrome uh, permission to, to store his files. Okay, uh, these folders here and this checkbox, it means that we are okay to work with overrides and to store uh, some local versions of our JavaScript. Uh, next, uh, it's uh, I guess that uh, validation uh, works should war, uh, should uh, be attached on uh, click event on this button or uh, submit event of our form. So let's uh, see what uh, listeners we have on our forums. And to do it, we should, uh, of course, choose uh, our forum in the DOM tree uh, panel and then go to, to the event listeners. Here we could see all event listeners that uh, uh, was applied to our forms, uh, we can and here we can see that uh, for the submit event we have just one listener. Uh, it's from our index.js file, from our code, not from some third library, not from um, browsers or extensions. So we can click on it and move to our code. Okay, here we have uh, here we have some uh, simple uh, function that. Uh, apply our validation uh, on submit event. Uh, let's uh, let's set our first breakpoint. To do it here, we should click on the line number uh, like this. And this blue point, it means that uh, we enabled uh, our breakpoint at the line 259. Uh, in this, in our code, we could see these two marks. One of them uh, is selected and the second one is not selected. It's because uh, generally we have in this line uh, two expressions. 
it's called uh, our validate function. Second one, it's this if condition. Uh, for us, it's more important to uh, dive into validate functions. So mark second one and, uh, and mark uh, first one. Okay. Uh, also, all active breakpoints we could see here on the right uh, side of this panel. Uh, so now let's submit our form. And we could see that uh, execution has stopped uh, at our breakpoint. What we have this in this panel? At the top of this panel, uh, at the right part, we have, uh, we have this navigations button, which can help us to move to the next breakpoint, to uh, step into the next function call, step out of current function, and uh, move uh, step by step for our JavaScript. Uh, using this button, we can deactivate all, all our breakpoints if we uh, want to store them, but want to use in current uh, for some time. And uh, the last uh, button here, it's a button that can help us enable breakpoints in uh, situations where we got some exceptions. If we mark this checkbox, it means that we want to have breakpoints uh, in every on every exception that will uh, that will be thrown in our uh, application. Uh, we don't need it for now. Uh, and also here we have sections like scope. Uh, scope it's a section where we where we could see all available uh, variables for our current line of code. It could be local, like uh, this variable, which now equal of our form. And event variable, it's uh, one of uh, our argument. And uh, of course, we could see all variables uh, from closure scope and uh, from global scope. And of, uh, of course, if uh, we are in some block scope, like four, uh, we will have uh, one more section here. Uh, next section, it's call stack. And here we could see the whole call stack uh, of current uh, function. And of course, we can navigate by clicking on each step of uh, this call stack trace. Um, the, race, the rest uh, sections, they, they are also interesting. But uh, if you want, you can read about them later. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, we set up our first breakpoint and let's move to the next step. To do it, we can click here. And what we see, and now we are at the first line of uh, validate function. Uh, we can see that local scope was changed and now we have this uh, value, uh, which is this variable uh, that is equal undefined and is valid variable that is equal undefined as well. It's because now we are ex uh, exactly at the first line of code, but it's not uh, executed yet. Uh, so yeah, let's go to the next line and we can see that uh, here uh, is valid function was uh, set. Now it's uh, equal true. And uh, we have new uh, scope with the name block because we are now in four uh, block. And also we can see the, this uh, comment line uh, with the value of uh, is valid variable. And also if we want to know about some variables, we can uh, hover this uh, variable and see what's are stored there. Uh, so we can see, for example, that in the settings variable, we have this complex object that contains all uh, our validation settings. Uh, and based on uh, our error message, I, uh, I believe that uh, our issue should be somewhere in this in the second validation in between length, because we uh, has message that uh, should be uh, related to our length issue. Okay, so let's move here and put uh, one more big point here. But uh, before we will move in this function, let's go back using this call stack trace. Oh, sorry, let's, let's move here. 
again and uh, let's move to the next steps uh here we have function uh with the name get value i want to dive there uh, in this function we could see that call uh, we, we could see code that uh, works just with uh, jQuery which is third party library and if I click on the next step uh, we we will be in this uh, third uh, library code which I believe is not uh, interesting for us and we can uh, believe that uh, third party libraries are okay and uh, we don't want to be here. So we can add uh, any scripts to ignore list. To do it, we can call a context menu and press add script to ignore list. On your ignore scripts, you can find, if you click on uh, this uh, settings icon here and go to ignore list here. Uh, here you also could set up uh, any rules uh, to ignore any scripts of your application. Okay, let's um, let's go next. Yeah, we can see that now we are um, we are again in our main index.js. So let's move to let's assume our JavaScript code and move to the next uh, breakpoint. Okay, we are in the second validation function. Um, now we can see what's going on here. To do it, first of all. Uh, to know what's the value of some complex uh, expressions, we can uh, we can select him and then uh, hover. Okay, it says us that uh, the value of this whole expression is false. Okay, let's then highlight first part of this expression, and uh, it says that first part is false. Okay, and that means that uh, issue can be here okay let's check uh, value of our username is equal to four and uh, minimum is three it should be tr true and i also see that i should change this sign okay i can change it and press uh, save button uh, when i saved it uh, you saw that uh, uh, that browser uh, restart this function because previously we was at line 133. It's uh, because on every save, uh, on every uh, saving action, browser restart execution this function, but it's not refresh your scope. It means that uh, here we didn't change anything. But if uh, we had some code that uh, uh, that change uh, some you know, global variable or some variable uh, of scope not from this function we should uh, know that on each uh, on each call of this function uh, scope will not will be refreshed and to do it we can uh, edit every variable just here from the right panel so i can click here and just change what i on what value i want okay uh, but uh, we still uh, receive this uh, issue. It means that uh, now we are going to return uh, error message, but we want to be here because uh, our username length is between uh, three and less than 16. Okay, so let's check again. What's going on here? Yeah, it's true, so it's okay. And at the second uh, part, we have same issue so let's update our sign and press save button okay uh, and if i click on the next step uh, yeah now we see that uh, our validation is fine and uh, we can exactly continue our application okay it means that our application works and uh, here after we saved our uh, files uh we can see this uh, purple icon here it means that we have a local version of this file and if we go to override here we can see all overrided files and uh, of course we can see this uh, icon uh, near network tab it's because uh, browser overrided some uh, some urls from external to the local variant this file 
And uh, now if we refresh our the page and uh, hide this uh, panel, I uh, we can fill it again. And see that all works. Uh, and one more, uh, one more uh, detail. It's uh, if we, uh, if we open this panel and click on this button, we st will still have these breakpoints. It means that these breakpoints uh, are applicable only when we have the these uh, debug tools open. If it's not uh, visible, our breakpoints not working. So it's a little bit uh, safety for for some customers to not uh, trigger these breakpoints on production. Uh, and of course, uh, we can integrate these breakpoints with uh, our ID. For example, here on the screen, you could see that we have breakpoints at line, at line uh, 18. And uh, at the panel below, we have uh, call stack of our current uh, uh, for a current JavaScript code. And uh, here we have uh, all available variables uh, that are visible for our code in the scope, in the current scope. Uh, okay, this is uh, generally, this is real powerful approach and uh, that I highlighted it, it is not all uh, that we can get from these breakpoints. And I really suggest you to read the documentation about it if you didn't use it, because in some uh, situations, uh, breakpoints can save your time and help to get more information about issues about your application and generally about your current uh, JavaScript program. Um, okay, but uh, what if we, uh, for example, want to uh, debug our application of on mobile phone. Uh, for this, we can use some additional uh, breakpoints or uh, not breakpoints, additional tools. Uh, first of them, it's a remote debugging or remote debug. Uh, exactly, it's a approach that give us the same uh, debug tools, uh, but uh, which will show us information about uh, our page on the phone. Uh, and here I have a small video where at the left side, I uh, have screen of my mobile phone. And on the right part, I have uh, uh, just a web browser, it's Safari. Uh, so let's see, to, to call this uh, feature, we should go to develop section at the top uh, panel and then choose uh, device and what we want to debug our application and choose a tab, what we want to uh, debug. Okay, and uh, then we can just uh, work and interact with our application uh, because we have exactly the same uh, tool, uh, debug tools, uh, but it's connect with our phone. We can uh, work with elements, we can work with JavaScript, uh, we can uh, see all information about network and uh, it's also interesting that uh, in the timeline tab, we can refresh our application and see uh, some screenshots that uh, was uh, made during loading process. Uh, and uh, I'm working on Mac, so uh, that's why uh, we have a video on Safari. But if you are working on uh, Windows, you can do the same uh, with Chrome and your Android device. But as you remember, as I remember, you should have a cable and you should connect your phone, a mobile phone, uh, to your laptop by cable. Um, okay. Uh, and when we have uh, our local applications, uh, okay, of course, it could be situation uh, where we want to test it uh, without any. Uh, any development server or any external server just from our local host. But by default, it's not uh, visible from any uh, from any other devices. And uh, with this uh, problem, uh, us can help tools like you can see on the screen, it's server and JROC, page kit and a local tunnel. 
uh, from these tools, NGROC, I guess, is a more popular tool. And uh, on the screen, it's screen from uh, the main NPM page of NGROC. We can see how this tool works. So here is our application that uh, that is working on our local host. Here we have some NGROC uh, cloud servers. And when we run this, uh, this tool, uh, it creates uh, something like tunnel between the cloud service and our local mission and give us URL, uh, which we can provide to, you know, to our teammates, to our customers, to demo something, to make, we also can use it on uh, our another device to see how application works there. And uh, here I have one more video uh, on, what, on what I can show how Jiroc works. Uh, at the left part, we have two shell panels. Uh, in this demo, I will uh, I will use just simple React app application that uh, was created uh, using the Create React app tools. Uh, and uh, at the top panel, uh, I will start this application. And uh, on the bottom shell, I will uh, launch this ngrock. And to do it, uh, we should just uh, call ngrock HTTP and the number of our port, which is 3,000 in uh, in our current uh, situation. Then ngrock provide us uh, two URLs. One of them is HTTP, and second one is HTTPS link. And uh, yeah, it's uh, also nice to have uh, this HTTPS uh, link because we don't need to do any additional works with uh, SSL certificate to have a HTTPS connection. So uh, we can copy this link and uh, use it on any, any external device to provide it to any, uh, anybody from our team, any customer, yeah. It's just work and visible outside of the local network. Uh, okay, now we know how to uh, how to work with uh, application on uh, uh, on device outside of our local network. But what if we want to automate this process a little bit to debug it? Uh, you know, maybe on. Uh, uh, on more than one device or to debug it on device that we don't have physically now. Uh, with that, with this uh, problem, us can help tools like browser stack, source labs, and Lambda test. Uh, here you could see uh, your dashboard uh, from browser stack. I guess again, browser stack, it's a more popular tool from this. Uh, browser state provide us uh, a lot of different devices and browser versions and browsers. Uh, here you can see that uh, we have Android, uh, iOS, Windows Phone uh, systems. We also have Windows and Mac, and we can choose any version of, uh, I guess, any browsers, or even we can choose uh, different version of devices like uh, different iPhones here, iPads here, and so on. And uh, also, you should keep in mind that uh, browser stack it's uh, it's mostly paid uh, application. I mean that if you want to use it on your real project, you will need to buy some plan uh, because uh, yeah, of course, browser stack have <clears throat> free plan, but uh, it give you just one minute, just one minute uh, for session for each device per day. So if you, for example, want to check uh, how your application work on iPhone 6, uh, iPhone 6 Plus, uh, you will have just one minute per day in a free plan here. Uh, next, uh, next tool or library, it's Puppeteer. Uh, Puppeteer, it's a Node.js library, which provide a high level API to control Chrome and uh, Chromium over the DevTools protocol. So you can write a simple code to uh, that will interact uh, with your browser. For example, here we can see some simple code that uh, that open developers.google.com in a Chrome and then type headless Chrome in the search bar and uh, 
just click submit button to see the results there. Um, yeah, and uh, as I remember, you can uh, work uh, just uh, just with Chrome or Chromium browser if, uh, using this tool. But if you want to uh, work with another browsers, you can use uh, mostly the similar uh, tool with the name Selenium, but uh, it gives you a little bit uh, uh, lower level of API uh, with what you can work here. Uh, okay, and uh, one more important uh, thing it's understanding how we can uh, get as much as possible information about errors that could be on a customer's devices that happened on customers devices uh, for this i really suggest you to use uh, uh, tools with the name sentry.io it provides you a really powerful dashboard and uh, api and sdk uh, where you can set up uh, some charts when you have uh, ability to uh, to see many different information about uh, on what devices uh, you have your errors in what environments and things like this and of course you can export uh, data about your errors to to tsv files for example uh, and it have uh, it has also very powerful uh, SDK. That means that uh, I guess you can integrate it in every code that you have. It could be your favorite framework or just pure JavaScript or maybe even another language if you want. Uh, and uh, this is uh, on this page, you can see how, uh, how looks information about just one error in this uh, tool. Uh, it's, uh, you can see here on the right uh, side that uh, we have, uh, for example, half of our errors on the Chrome browser, uh, 100 of them in environment and things like this. Uh, here we have our call stack uh, for our current uh, issue. And I really suggest you to set up, do not forget to set up uh, JavaScript uh, maps because without it, uh, you could see just one line of minified code and it will be not uh, uh, not uh, so easy to understand uh, why this uh, error happened and where it happened. And of course, you can provide uh, any information uh, from your application to this uh, dashboard. I mean that, for example, you can add some information about uh, your current user, maybe its login or you know, a unique identifier in your system, uh, or maybe you know, some other information that you want to have and you want uh, that you want to see about your errors. Uh, here on the last slide, I added some useful links that you uh, can use to read more about these tools. Uh, so generally, that's all I want to share it with you. It was just a brief, uh, uh, brief mention about main tools that you can use during your <clears throat> debug session. Uh, what questions do you have? So we have a question in the chat uh, from Serhii. Uh, how to set up source maps to the Sentry IO to not share your source code to the world? Uh, generally, Sentry have uh, in documentation generally have separate section uh, and in what you can get more information. But uh, if uh, in short words, you can uh, upload your you can add some settings in your building process that which will upload your source map to the Sentry directly, or you can add uh, some. Uh, uh, it's like security header, uh, which could be applied to the to your source map uh, files, and uh, somewhere in. Sentry settings, you can provide uh, information that uh, my source map have security headers. So to uh, 
uh, to receive information about that, please provide this header, something like this. Yeah, but to know more, please uh, read this in centrist documentations. Thank you, Denise. Do we have other questions? Okay, I have a question about NGROC. I know that some security policies forbid to use NGROC and such tunneling. So uh, do you know whether it's safe to use NGROC and uh, what precautions should be taken if no? Yeah, I, I know about this. And I know even if you you will try after this presentation to open a uh, site, main site of this uh, tool of NGROC, you will see our internal uh, soft serve security policy uh, label. Uh, last time I... I needed to use it around one year ago, and uh, at the time I created a ticket on our uh, help desk dashboard where I provided all information uh, why and what I need, and they allow listed my uh, my local mission to use these injuro tools, and I needed uh, these tools uh, in situation where I created uh, some code uh, which should work with uh, web hooks. So uh, we've hooks for some internal uh, tool. So in that situation, I really needed it. So yeah, also I, that I would suggest you it's to create a help desk ticket and ask to allow list your local mission to work with it. Thank you. And I have one more question. Uh, so you mentioned Puppeteer. Is it uh, similar to Cypress? Uh, as I know, Cypress it's a testing tool. I'm not sure. I'm not sure uh, that Cypress have ability to uh, make some uh, automated scripts. But uh, exactly what Puppeteer do uh, when you write the scripts and run it? It's uh, running like a Node.js application, and uh, it will uh, launch your real browser and uh, do some things there, as I remember. Or, or maybe not, not real. I adapt a little bit because uh, I uh, I use different approaches to to work with that. Mm. So yeah, generally I'm not sure that it's same. I think that this is different tools and uh, Cypress it's more for the tests, but Puppeteer it's more to automate some process in your browsers, not for for the tests. I hope. Thank you. Thank you. We have other questions in the chat. So what is the best approach, in your opinion, to debug Safari on Windows PC? Safari on Windows PC? Uh, I think generally it's not a good idea to, to debug Safari on, on Windows. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, you can try this browser stack or one of one of these <clears throat> tool to to work with uh, Safari or any other browsers or device which you don't have physically. I think this is the way the best way. So yeah. Thank you. One more question. So, uh, do you prefer debugging straight into browser or do you prefer debugging in VS Code? Do you see some pros in debugging with VS Code plus browser? Uh, generally, it's uh, uh, it depends on uh, situation. I mean that uh, if I just should know uh, current value of some variable in my code, I can even just uh, just add something like console.debug and it's enough. I can refresh my page and uh, that's enough. But if I have some complex uh, situation where I should, uh, I don't know, I, uh, I understand that this debug will be not so easy. Uh, in this situation, first, I will try to do it in browser. And uh, if I... If it's not enough, I could go to my VS code. And yeah, one uh, one interesting uh, things it's that in real world we are working with, uh, for example, a React application, and we have uh, some uh, something like Webpack, 
that uh, could uh, have uh, uh, some building uh, approach that could uh, minify our code, for example. And uh, it's not uh, comfortable to work with minified code. So, for example, if uh, you see you have on production side minified code, it will be not uh, comfortable to you uh, by default to work with uh, breakpoints in a browser. So, in this case, I will uh, launch this uh, site on my local machine and will work with breakpoints from my IDE because uh, using this approach, I will not have my code as minified file. Uh, I hope it, it helps <laughs> to give answer on this question. Thank you. Do we have other questions? It appears that no. <clears throat> so uh, I think we can uh, come to the end of our meeting. Uh, Denise, I would like on behalf of all participants to thank you for your performance. Uh, it, uh, your information that you shared with us is really valuable. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for joining us uh, today. I uh, hope to see you on our next engineering communities events. Uh, the materials from this uh, meeting uh, will be shared with you. Uh, so take care of yourself and have a great day ahead. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.